we'll figure that out as we go. Yeah. We'll now call this meeting of the Jacksonville City Council to order. I want to welcome everyone who's in attendance tonight at to this meeting and also those that are viewing the meeting on G10. Uh, to begin with, we're going to start, we're going to try something a little bit different tonight in the uh, procedure that uh, we normally use in our uh, meeting protocol. And we're going to, tonight, we're going to move the approval of the consent items at the tail end of the first session of public comment. Uh, to give folks an opportunity that may want to comment on a consent item, the opportunity to do so before they're passed one way or the other. Um, I have some special guests tonight. I have Mr. Anthony Harvey, who's on the executive committee with the Chamber of Commerce, who's here with us tonight uh, observing, Mr. Harvey. And I also have three young gentlemen. They're Boy Scouts of America, Troop 496 from Richlands, North Carolina. I have Mr. Stephen Hendrickson, Mr. Timothy Dalton, and Mr. Matthew Mills. They're working on their, uh, their citizenship badge in the community. And they're going to earn it by coming up front here, and they're going to lead us all in the Pledge of Allegiance. And uh, i ask them now if you'll join us up front. And after they lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, you'll remain standing for the invocation by Mr. Carter over here, our city attorney. Please rise. And salute. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our Heavenly Father, as always, we take time to give you thanks. You're the giver of all good gifts, and you have blessed us individually and blessed us as the city of Jacksonville, and we do give thanks. We also give thanks tonight for the leaders of our Jacksonville Youth Council who will be soon taking the oath of office, for the, their leadership and for the entire <coughs> Youth Council, and for their interest in good government, and especially their interest in serving our city and its citizens. And as always, we pray for our military members who are serving us here and around the world, for their safety, for their anxious families. Give guidance and direction to our mayor and council. We ask all this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Please be seated. Council, you should at your places have a copy of the agenda for tonight's meeting. I would move, uh, uh, entertain a motion to approve. Move approval. Second. Any further comment? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Next, we have the approval of the minutes. We have a July 22nd, 2014 special workshop meeting and a July 22nd, 2014 regular meeting. Mayor, I move we approve both sets of meeting, uh, minute meetings. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further comment? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Next, we have a couple of presentations we're going to make tonight, and uh, I'm going to come around front here. officers that are going to be leading the youth council in the coming year. Uh, our youth council serves uh, to give youth in Jacksonville a voice and they govern themselves, perform public service and are available to provide connection from the Jackson, uh, with the Jacksonville City Council to the youth com community. Uh, we as elected officials of the city of Jacksonville do welcome uh, their input. Uh, matter of fact, I've met with them on numerous occasions and we've uh, had some very uh, fruitful dialogue. So at this time, I would like to have the officers for this coming year to come forward. I'm going to ask Katie Morley, 
who will be the secretary. Uh, well, I'll, I'll introduce them further up here. Trusha Patel and Brandon Spence. If you would come forward with your parents, if your parents are here, please come up and join them. And you too, Carmel. Thank you. Carmela George, who is behind me with the Bibles there, she is the, actually the program coordinator uh, for the Youth Council. She's our uh, community program coordinator. Katie is the secretary. She comes from Southwest High School, and her parents are Mr. and Mrs. Morley. Uh, Trosha, am I saying that correctly? Is, uh, she's an executive committee member. She hails from Southwest High School, and uh, her parents are Hiram and Manisha Patel. And Brandon Spence is on the executive committee, and he's in a large seat from Jacksonville High School. And Carla Spence is his mother. Glad to have you. Now, if you'll have one of your significant, your parent or, or Carmela, you're going to hold it for her? Okay, if you would turn and repeat after me. Place your hand. Okay, raise your raise your, raise your there you go. Okay. All right. Left hand on the left hand on the Bible. Raise your right. Okay. Repeat after me. I state your name. I Katie Moore. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and maintain. That I will support and maintain. The Constitution and laws of the United States. The Constitution and laws of the United States. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. Not inconsistent therewith. And that, I will and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of my office. The duties of my office. And if you will state your office Southwest of the Jacksonville City Youth Council. Youth Council. And, maintain and, and maintain and uphold all the laws and regulations, laws and regulations of the city of Jacksonville. Of the city of Jacksonville. So help me God. Congratulations and good luck in the upcoming year. Thank you. Next, we're going to have a presentation of a North Carolina Justice Academy certificate. And I'm going to call my two Timmies up here. Corporal Timothy Carr and Deputy Chief Timothy Malthavitano. He can come over here. Congratulations. Doing all right? Yes, sir. Okay. This guy here, Corporal Timothy Carr, recently completed the Criminal Investigation Certificate Program at the North Carolina Justice Academy. This program recognizes the achievement of a law enforcement officer or law enforcement professionals who have completed appropriate training in order to better prepare themselves for the rigors and challenges of law enforcement criminal investigations. It requires a participant to complete 500 hours of training on investigative techniques Details of legal challenge changes, technological advances, and the practical application of detectives' best practices, which are continuously changing. Corporal Carr has been with the police department now since 2000 and currently serves as a community on the community response team. And I have something for you here. That's nice. Wow. Very nice. They, they do it right, don't they? Yes, sir. Congratulations, Tim. Thank I know you, you work real hard. You've always been a good officer. Yes, You've done your job well. Yes, Thank you very much. Good and job. Thanks for that.
Did you get a picture, Steve? Okay, good deal. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. Oh, you got to come back, too. I forgot, you're supposed to give a steep speech there, Tim Carr. No, I'm just kidding. All right, I do need Sergeant Norman Davis, Corporal Timothy Carr, Officers Lonnie Horton, Justin Lee, and Jonathan Marshburn, and I've got Deputy Chief Malfitano here with me. If you all join me up here. I'm on. On August 23, 2013, officers of the community response team were dispatched to a report of a shooting. The investigation revealed that an individual had been shot and suspects had fled the scene by vehicle. Sergeant Davis assumed command of the scene. Corporal Carr maintained control over the crowd and established security around the scene. Officer Horton questioned witnesses, located the gunshot victim behind a nearby building, provided medical assistance, and radioed for rescue to respond. Officer Lee and Marshburn located the suspect vehicle and conducted a traffic stop. While removing the three suspects from the car, one suspect attempted to use an infant as a human shield. Sergeant Davis and Officer Marshburn removed that suspect from the vehicle while another took custody of the baby and ensured the infant remained calm and was safe. The swift decision a decisive response of the officers resulted in a resolution of a very dangerous situation without injury. Their actions are worthy of police commendation awards. Is the uh, victim uh, Anthony Sutton here tonight? Okay. Okay. Sergeant Norman Davis. Yes, sir. Congratulations. Thank you very much for your service. You do a good job, Norm. Appreciate it. Pam? Again? <coughs> Speech? <laughs> Excellent job. Great job, guys. Way to work as a team. Okay, for the next, uh, the next awards, these are Medal of Valor awards. I would like to call up Corporal Jack Cohen, Officer Chris Funky, and I got Deputy Chief Malfitano here with me to help, and I'm going to let you hold those. Hey, Jack. On, July 5th, on June 15th, excuse me, 2014, Corporal Cohen and Officer Funky responded to a single car crash at the North Carolina 24 Access Road entrance to the Jacksonville Bypass. Upon arrival, they saw a Toyota pickup truck that had landed on the top of an electrical box. 
The driver of the vehicle was hysterically running in the roadway screaming to the officers that there, were, there was a passenger in the vehicle. With live electrical wires and fuel spilled throughout the area, both officers ignored the risk to themselves in order to save the victim. Corporal Cohen entered the truck, turned off the ignition, and cut the seat belt from the crash victim in the passenger seat. Officer Funky removed the passenger from the vehicle and began CPR when he was unable to detect pulse or breathing. The passenger regained consciousness and was transported by EMS to a medical facility. The driver who was charged with the crash was also transported for medical evaluation. The unwavering courage, selflessness, and decisive leadership of Corporal Cohen and Officer Funky, while under risk of severe injury and possible death, were integral to the successful outcome and the deserving of this Medal of Valor award. And to each of you, Jack. I just want to say one thing. I mean, that's some great work, guys. It, you know, it's what our citizens have come to expect that you deliver day in and day out. I want to, uh, if, if my G10 people can pan back there, I want you to take a look at, at the folks that, that come out, their brethren in uniform have come out tonight to support all these folks here to be recognized. That's why they do such a great job because they work as such a fine team. Uh, give them all a hand. This brings us to our first session of public comment for the evening. I don't have anyone signed up, but maybe we took the sheet up before you came in. If you want to speak, please raise your hand. I don't see any takers, so at this time I'll close that session of public comment. And at this time, I will entertain a motion to adopt the consent items. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? And uh, at this time, I'm going to take a brief pause. I know a lot of you have come here. You probably worked all day, and you're here for the council meet tonight to come out here in support of your fellow officers. And uh, I'm going to give everybody that came for the presentations tonight the opportunity to escape. Thank you. You're welcome. Now you're welcome to stay if you want to stay.
also have a, uh, a scout from Troop 370, Tanner Lilly. Tanner, where you at? Oh, there you are. <laughs> Good to see you. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, so that brings us to, uh, we're going to move on down to agenda item number seven, and this is a map amendment for rezoning from, uh, okay, from CC, uh, I'm sorry, from single uh, family residential and commercial corridor. Uh, it's going to be, asked to be rezoned to entirely commercial corridor, and Abigail Barman's our senior planner is going to present this item this time. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, what we have is a parcel that's split zoned, corridor commercial, and residential single family seven. The proposal is actually a staff initiated um, amendment to rezone the entire parcel to commercial corridor. You'll see it's right across from the Jacksonville landing. It's highlighted here in red. Here's an aerial view. Here is looking at it, you can see there's the uh, Marina Cafe, the water right there on the right. Across the street, the construction for Jacksonville Landing. Here's looking towards downtown on the bridge, looking south towards Holly Ridge. And this is the future land use. It's split between regional commercial and conservation due to the flood line. It's kind of a little strange in this area following where the flood zones are and we actually have new flood zone maps that should be released soon and so staff will be bringing forward a future land use amendment for this area to kind of clean it up and see which direction we should go based on where the flood zones are and where is actually feasible for development. But it was brought to our attention looking at this, one of the potential hurdles for this site could be the fact that the back half of it is zoned residential. So it would be restricted for any kind of commercial uses in that portion that's highlighted in yellow here. So staff is proposing to rezone the entire thing to commercial corridor, which would allow all of the business uses you'll see in the um, use table in your agenda packets. And with that, staff recommends approval of the rezoning based on findings of fact A, C, and D being found in the affirmative, and B, with the future land use amendment upcoming to sort of clean up that line and see what we should do in that area. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Uh, Council, any questions, Ms. Barman? All right, thank you. At this time, I will recess the regular City Council meeting and open the public hearing in this matter. Is there anyone that's present who wishes to speak on this matter? So please indicate by raising your hand. Okay, I'm going to close the public hearing and reconvene the regular Council meeting. Council, are you being asked to consider the uh, rezoning? Mayor Phillips, I move that we approve the rezoning request that will eliminate the split zoning and allow more uh, opportunities to develop the waterfront and uh, with the findings of fact A through D being found in the affirmative. A second. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. Agenda item number eight is a rezoning request from downtown <coughs> residential to downtown business. And this is on Ward Street. And Ms. Barman will be uh, presenting this item. Abigail. Um, this is three parcels in the downtown, 130, 132, and 134 Ward Street. See them highlighted here in the red, right at the end of Thompson Elementary School. Here is an aerial. These sites are sort of, they're existing sites and they have kind of a commercial use to them. Um, this is 134 Ward Street. This is across the street. So Ward Street's kind of a commercial use the other two buildings next to it are a um, apartment complex and so when we're looking at the potential uses for this building we've had some interest but it's zoned downtown residential so commercial uses are very limited in this site so similar to the rezoning you just saw to kind of open it up so that this property could be used without the hurdle of the commercial zoning we've proposed changing these three parcels from the downtown residential to the downtown business. With this site, these three parcels are zoned for um, high density residential. According to the future land use, we would recommend changing that to mixed use, which is the pink across the street. And as we're looking at this site, staff recommends uh, rezoning it from the downtown residential to the downtown business based on findings of fact A, C, and D being found in the affirmative and changing the future land use to reflect the mixed use with the upcoming CAMA update. 
and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Council, any questions of Ms. Barlow? Right. At this time, I'll recess the regular council meeting and open the public hearing on this matter. Is there anyone present wishes to speak? If so, indicate by raising your hand. Seeing no one, I'm going to close the public hearing, reconvene the regular council meeting. Council, you're being asked to uh, rezone, to approve the rezoning. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion that we approve the rezoning uh, based on findings X, uh, facts A, C, and D being found in the affirmative, and uh, that B will also, by directing staff to amend the future land use map, and that uh, um, I believe the rezoning will advance to public interest. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further comment? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Brings us to agenda item number nine. This is Unified Development Ordinance Text Amendment, uh, Article 4 on use uh, table and use specific standards for flex space in Abigail. You get to see me one more time. One more time. <laughs> With the UDO, we've been doing a lot of kind of looking at our different zoning and a different text. So you'll probably be seeing a lot more amendments from us, but this is one of the first ones. Just with that rezoning that um, you saw, we wanted to open up some of the downtown business. We've had some interest on that site as kind of using it as a flex space and looking at what that site could be used for because it's kind of, being that it's already developed, we want to see a lot of reuse in downtown rather than um, tearing down buildings and building new. We want to use what we have. so. To help accommodate that at this particular site, you've looked at adding flex space as a permitted use in the downtown business. So we would bend the use table here to allow it permitted. It's currently not allowed in the downtown business. But we also want to protect the other residential and commercial uses in the area. So to allow it within the downtown, we kind of came up with some standards that would limit its impact on the neighbors. Limiting its size, um, delivery so you wouldn't have trucks going in and out, no outdoor display because a lot of times with the flex space you'll have if they are working on let's say you know small machines they could have some parts out that they're displaying we don't want to see that in downtown so any kind of storage would have to be internal um, it wouldn't create any noise so basically you drive past it or live next to it wouldn't know what's going on there unless you actually came to the site so you want to open up the business portion of it while still re protecting the neighbors and residents downtown we also want to preserve Court Street, Old Bridge, and New Bridge as our main kind of commercial pedestrian areas downtown. So we would not permit the flex space on those main areas. And that's what we have before you as far as a text amendment to the downtown business. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Mr. Ward. Uh, you know, I, I did, I, of course, I attended the planning board, and it wasn't my place. To, I didn't think to speak up, but I was curious as, as to why we wouldn't allow Court, Old Bridge, and New Bridge to have flex space. To me, um, that makes perfectly good sense to have flex space along those, those corridors. Our thoughts as we were kind of discussing it as staff is flex space doesn't generate a lot of pedestrian traffic or walk-through traffic. It's usually something, let's say you have a lawnmower that you need repaired. You're going to drop it off that flex space, they're going to repair it, We'll bring it back out so it wouldn't generate something like a restaurant or a retail that you have people kind of walking by going in and out of the shops and it's kind of that downtown walkable pedestrian friendly atmosphere that's really kind of what we would envision on those major new bridge old bridge and court street but if we had somebody wanting to invest invest in downtown and wanted to put some flex space along those streets why wouldn't we want to do that I think just to preserve the available retail, retail space for sort of a higher type use. It's certainly something we can look at and potentially remove that restriction, but that was our thought as staff. Typically, the flex space, uh, the general flex space operations will typically have a garage door, um, and how would that? have an effect on the <coughs> ingress and egress on these major streets? Um, new things would require the downtown design guidelines. Um, specifically, the site that sort of triggered this text amendment is this site right here that you see it does have the garage door, mm -hmm. um, does have areas going in and out. We would want to limit the delivery so they aren't impacting the neighbors. And um, mm -hmm. site triangles, all of that stuff would uh, apply with being in a retrofit 
for some of the existing things, it would <coughs> fall under the nonconformities. So some of it would kind of work with what we have unless they... Well, that's my point. On the off streets, it would be appropriate, but you, you, it would, you would have a difficult time doing that on your main on your main roads if they have to have a garage door facing a major street. It would change the whole downtown uh, design standards, I think. But I don't think there would be any issues with the surrounding neighborhood businesses. No. Yeah. Don't you think? Well, you'd have to you'd have to redo your downtown design plan then, because if you have garage doors on Court Street with entrances and exits, I don't anticipate that. And, and that's that, flex space. Am I saying that correct. right? Correct. Yeah. I tell you what. Let's let me uh, let me interject something here. Let's let's go forward with the public hearing, and then we'll come back and have that discussion. Uh, probably be best to do it that way. Uh, so at this time, I'm going to recess the regular council meeting open the public hearing in this matter is there anyone present wishes to speak on this matter if so please indicate by raising your hand mr. Lanier thank you if you'd come up front to the podium I'd appreciate it and if you would state your name and address for the clerk that would be great my name is uh, Hugh Lanier I'm uh, owner of quality roofers incorporated here in Jacksonville our office is downtown uh, how will this affect us since we're already in place and uh, we have deliveries from you know tractor trailers not maybe once a day, you know, maybe three times a week. Is this going to affect us in any way? No. Because of our zoning that's already in place? Okay, that, that was all. I just want to make sure of that. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Mike. If you would, please state Mike your name. Mike Hewitt, 1 West Bay Shore, Jacksonville, North Carolina. I also have property in the area, and I'm, I'm just looking at the different things. When you're saying uh, deliveries should not routinely occur, uh, what, what, um, what time frame is routinely? An outdoor display of storage or goods, like he has some uh, particular equipment and different things like that on site. Is that something that is not going to? He is already there. Man. That's right. Yeah, but I'm I'm mainly asking for the building that you're you're got in question. The, the building that is currently vacant will have to meet all of these criteria. To to this right here. Correct. In other words, that building won't be able to take deliveries. It won't be able to have anything outside. No, sir. That building will be required to meet the standards as shown on the screen. Okay. Anyone else wish to speak? All right. Hearing no one, I'm going to close the public here and reconvene the city council, uh, regular council meeting. Now we can have, uh, generate some discussion. Pardon? Yeah, please, by all means. So we're saying we're going to implement flex space in the downtown district, business district. Currently is not permitted. Yes, so this would permit it given these conditions. But we're going to exclude Court, Old Bridge, and New Street, uh, New Bridge Street. As proposed, yes. But they are in the downtown business district. Yes. What you're I doing we is supposed to simplify this process instead of uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> it it does simplify the process because remember uh, these are things you can now do on all of the areas except Court, Old Bridge, and and uh, New Bridge without getting anything other than a standard permit. So from the simplification standpoint, the process is now walk in the door. If you meet these criteria, you get the permit. And again, if you look at the three. Uh, streets that we're uh, that we're excluding from this these are primarily your streets that you want to wind up being restaurants lawyers offices professional offices they are not streets such as as uh, the area where uh, you know uh, the A and V tire is or Ward Street those are very different in character you can appreciate that what uh, Mr. Lanier does and what is proposed for this building on Ward Street it's a different building it's a different setback. Uh, the other buildings that we're excluding are buildings that have really zero setback. They have no way, most of them have no way of getting a delivery other than stopping in the middle of the street. So there is different character there. 
And rather than create a new zoning district, what the staff tried to do was to change the use table so that flex space is now a permitted use within these guidelines. Can you give me another example of a... Probably not. Okay. <laughs> I'm doing the best I can where, here. I mean, where we have a zoning in place that says you can do this in this zone, but you can't do it if you're zoned this in this street. And, you know, you bring up a good point, but rather than create a new zoning district, you know, because uh, in a way, if you did this as a new zoning district, you'd be spot zoning. But this gives the flexibility for a building such as the city's A and B tire store, which we bought, or some of the other commercial stores that are along railroad or that are along other parts of Cheney to continue as they are under the downtown zoning without them having to be rezoned. But we're doing spot zoning kind of in reverse by eliminating well, you're, these. You're establishing streets. standards. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. The way that I see it is that you're you're actually <clears throat> you're adding a zoning to a particular you're adding a use that's not currently there, which is a benefit. Correct. And you're excluding it on your main redevelopment areas, which is your court and, and new bridge. But again, I, I would I don't see a problem with it. And, and and to the gentleman that came up, Mike that came up, I don't think it would prohibit anything in those other streets if it was permitted. If any flex space is going to have the type of business that's going to require deliveries, you know, obviously not every hour, but it's going to require some sort of deliveries if it's an automotive repair or a parts warehouse or, or a distribution center of some sort uh, that's typical of flex spaces. But you, would, you couldn't have that on your zero lot line, New Bridge Street and Court Streets. Does that make sense? So it's actually, you, you have an added benefit because now you have the ability to, to redevelop flex space in the downtown area that's currently not allowed with some limitations on the 10,000 square feet. So that's, it's not a negative as I see it. The, the, the particular building Mr. Hewlett was referring to that he owns down there, you, you shoot that again, that's on Ward Street, right Mike? Actually, it's a building he referred to, but it's not one he owns. It is the, it is the property that Mr. Riggs did yeah. own and it's now in the process of uh, being sold to but a, that's a on new Ward, venture. That's on Ward that's Street on Ward if my Street. memory serves me correct. So what in, what in that would that not meet in the new standard? Uh, we believe it would meet all of the standards and to be you know very uh, uh, candid with you the reason why we are coming up with this proposal is that under the current zoning this building is non-conforming and it has been non-conforming to the point where it cannot now be reestablished. We looked at the building, we felt that the building had value, it's certainly not dilapidated, it's in good condition, it has not been a nuisance to the neighborhood even though it was operated for years as a non-conforming use. But as a non-conforming use, once 180 days of vacancy or the elimination of the non-conformity occurred, the non-conformity could not be reestablished. So we felt the cure here was to rezone the property. We looked at rezoning and said, well, we really don't want to get into a new zoning district. So another cure was to come up with a change of the land use table so that the permitted uses would allow the flex space. But that would be favorable to the owner. For us Absolutely, to because yeah. otherwise because the property is right. vacant and could not be occupied other than for residential. By all means, please. I, I, I want to hear from you. I just don't understand how, if, if you need to come to the microphone. Yeah, if you, if you don't mind, please. Thank I'm, you. I'm probably real slow and dumb, but uh, if I go, can you go back to the screen where you had the rules? <laughs> okay. In other words, right now, if I'm looking at Mr. Lanier's property, all of these things he's able to do. If you look at that property, you're saying you won't be able to do these things. No, we're saying that those things he can do as long as they're within those guidelines. You're taking a negative, we're taking a positive. He can have deliveries. He can have outdoor displays or storage as long, that's not permitted, so you're right, he can't do that. 
The business shall not create noise, vibration, odor. He can't do that. So, you know, you're, you're right from one standpoint. No, he can't make noise. No, he can't make odor. No, he can't display things exterior. The option is, is it better for this property to have reasonable regulations or is it better for this property to sit vacant? In the staff's mind, it's better for it to have reasonable regulations. You may disagree. No, I'm just, in other words, let's say Mr. Lanier decided to move his business across the street into the vacant building. Then he would have to comply with these regulations. Right. In other words, he would be able to have no deliveries, not have That's not what it says. Routinely. Mike, read what it says. Delivery should not routinely occur. He can have deliveries. By it also says by large vehicle. By okay. No larger than 10,000 square feet. That property is more than 10,000 square feet. No outdoor display of storage or goods. So in other words, you couldn't put a tractor in that parking lot or anything like that. Correct. And so, the property is not larger than 10,000 square feet as far as the building. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, maybe, get, get, Glenn, uh, my mic keeps cutting in and out, so pushing the button doesn't help. Um, Mr. Lanier's business would, would be currently non-conforming if it was in this in this case. Is that correct? Technically, Mr. Lanier's business is non-conforming today. This change actually makes him more conforming than he is today. But. That's provided that Mr. Lanier has a flex space to begin with. We were not looking at Mr. Lanier's uh, roofing business as a flex space. We define flex space. So it may not even impact Mr. Lanier at all. It depends on how it's defined. If, if, if I've read the, the definition of flex space, I think he does, his uh, company does meet the definition. And if that's the case, then there's positive things because right now his business is not allowed at all in downtown under the current use table. So now there's a provision that would allow his business to be permitted versus not at all, but there are new standards for a new business that wanted to open up in a similar fashion. New, new business. So Mr. Lanier would not, be in, would not be in violation of storing equipment outside? No, because he's currently doing it, he would be able to continue it. On the other hand, let's be clear, if he quits storing it for 180 days or longer, he cannot reestablish the nonconformity. But in the vacant property, the parcel 134, you would not be able to do that. That is correct. Okay, so in other words, anything that would be stored there would have to be within the confines of the building. Correct. Okay, so you couldn't put a work truck or anything like that there. Correct. Okay. I do have a. Uh, can, can, one more question. Please pay off the uh, what, what kind of business could locate in a place like that that had that kind of rules? Well, our understanding is that the realtor is here who is representing the property, and since he has a potential buyer, you may want to ask him that. I asked the council. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, the, uh, I, I don't agree with um, not allowing it on these, on these streets, and, and the reason being it, it um, we're trying to redevelop, we're trying to encourage businesses downtown to come back in, people to come back in to create small mom and pop type businesses come down in, down in there. Some of the things that meet flex space definitions are computer repair, a construction company. Uh, you know, to me, those businesses would be just as, as, as appropriate as, a, as an attorney uh, fronting uh, New Bridge Street or Old Bridge or Court Street. So those are the types of businesses that, that meet the definition of flex space. Mr. Lanier's business, in my opinion, meets flex space because he's, he's not doing business right there. He's actually um, working at other places like computer repair. Generally, they go to somebody else's house to fix or the business to fix it. Or a construction company, which Mr. Lanier certainly is, he's going somewhere else to do the work. So, you know, I, I don't see a problem with, uh, with with uh, allowing allowing certain types of not not every not every definition of construction company perhaps would fit court old bridge or new bridge street but certainly in the broad definition of flex space there are, are quite a few appropriate businesses that would fit on on those three streets in my in my humble opinion as it currently sits as without this, um, without this regulation, 
moving forward tonight, what is that property allowed to do that we just changed tonight? It will be allowed to do anything that is in the uh, current zoning that you just approved for the property, which is downtown business. It would not be allowed to do flex space. Okay. And I don't know if we have a use table that actually shows. Uh, we don't have the full use tables in your packet. Um, this just shows for a flex space in the existing district. Can you read out, do you have the full text where you could read some of the? Research and development is permitted. A recycling drop-off center would be a special use. Wholesale would be a special use. That's only do we have the full yeah, that is all, that's all over. That's only in the industrial services. Let's see. What, what I think I, I'm curious about is what qualifies as a, as a flex space. I'm not even clear on that. You Would you like for us to read the definition of flex space? Ask, please. Absolutely. All right, flex space for the UDO is defined as establishments engaged in the repair or servicing of agricultural, industrial, business, or consumer machinery, equipment, products, or byproducts. Firms that provide these services do so by mainly providing centralized services for separate retail outlets. Contractors and building maintenance services and similar uses perform services off-site. Few customers, especially the general public, come to the site. Accessory activities may include retail sales, offices, parking, and storage. Normally, flex space, I mean, the bottom line here is we're trying to find a use that allows this building to get back into a proper use. I would tell you, normally you would not have flex space downtown. You would have it in an industrial park or in a more uh, light industrial setting. And you know what we're trying to do, if you pardon the, the bluntness, is cure a problem for a building that has not created a problem in the past. The uses have been compatible even though they were non-conforming and we're trying to find a way to put the building back in use rather than have it sit vacant. Uh, I don't know that it's realistic for this building to, to be used the way that the downtown business would allow. Because remember, downtown business is primarily offices, it's primarily restaurants, it's primarily retail. That's what the downtown business is in almost any community. Now, I suppose that a, a Bell's bondsman may want to rent the, the facility, but I'm not so sure that a, a restaurant would want to locate there. Maybe a lawyer's office might want to locate there, but it's going to be very limited use. And, you know, it's, uh, it's a difficult thing to fix, but I think you would agree with us that the intent of trying to get the building back into a productive use is something we as a government should try to do. Now, whether we're doing it the right way with the regulations, uh, you know, we're certainly open to direction from the council. Well, my, my thing is that I would, whatever step we would take, I would want to make sure that we do something that's not so restrictive on the property owner itself, you know, that they can't use it for, you know, purposes. You know, if, if, I, if I buy a piece of property, I sure don't want, after I've made the purchase, want somebody, want the city to come out and tell me that I can't use it but for certain things now. And I think that's, I think that's the, the uh, overtone that I'm getting here is that that may be the case. It's the opposite. It's the opposite. It's the opposite. Okay. We were proposing Explain. it as a permitted use mm -hmm. with these standards. One other thing to consider, you can make it a special use permit and do away with these standards and consider each one on a case-by-case -case basis. But a special use permit also has some, some potential hurdles, such as a prospective buyer's got to hire a surveyor, have it 
laid out, designed, tried to meet current codes, which would be more strict potentially than just meeting these standards here. So I mean, there's we thought about other options, and we could certainly go back and look at those. But I mean, a special use permit anywhere in downtown and do away with these standards, and then city council consider each one on a case by case basis. It's another option. Okay, say for instance, uh, Mr. Lanier's business that's been there for quite some time, you say is not in compliance. It's not compliant. Okay. Say Mr. Lanier sells his business, and during the period of transition between owners, the, the new owner, you know, six months down the road decides he wants to put another roofing business there. He can't do it, can he? After six months, that if the business ceased, you're right, he would not be able to put it back under the current codes. But if he sold it and the new owner continued the business, it would... He could continue he could the business. Continue. But I would also point out that, that with this, he could continue the business if we, and I'm not sure we all agree that he, what he does is flex space, but he would be able to reestablish it. He would just have to meet these standards if 180 days went by. I mean, it's not a perfect world by any means. What we're trying to do is find some solutions. I have a question for Mr. Hewitt. What about these regulations do you not feel that you could utilize the building? What would prohibit you from using the building? Because currently you can't use the building for flex space. Well, I'm considering purchasing the building. Okay. Uh, as you have, you've looked at anything that I've got. I take care of it. It always mm -hmm. looks nice. I try to keep everything up, but I don't really need the building per se to put my stuff in it. I would obviously be wanting to try to rent it for somebody else. The only person that is going to want that building is going to be some type of service industry construction type based person right. well if they well, can't even put a work truck right, in the but parking what I'm lot saying is currently you're not able to do that this mm -hmm. would allow you to do no that. he just told me it wouldn't no that's not what he said though and I think we're complicating this I'm just trying to help you out mm -hmm. this will actually help you not hurt you because this will allow you to do what you just said and but let's let's clarify with what, with the conditions what you're talking are, about is the land use what he's talking about is the truck and what you're saying is this would allow him to put a contractor in there. Okay. What he was saying is these rules wouldn't allow the contractor to park a truck there. Why wouldn't he be allowed to park a truck there if that's a driveway? Well, because it does say outside display or storage of goods and or equipment is not permitted. Now, yeah, but there would be an interpretation as to whether a truck is yeah. equipment. I think what that's equipment, getting into the weeds, though. I mean, we can't allow, we can't deny someone from parking their work vehicle in front of their driveway. What you're saying is they can't have a cement truck Correct. parked there for the weekend. And there is some ambiguity there as far as the delivery routinely yeah, you're have delivery. You know, What is routinely? We, we don't know that. Yeah. Well, the intent, remember, is to limit the tractor trailers. That's what it says. Yeah. You Where know, what, we're, what it trailer. doesn't eliminate yeah. is a 24-foot fixed truck you know, fixed axle truck uh, that's not a semi from delivering three times a day. It doesn't limit that at all. I think this helps you rather than hurts you in, in well, this situation as I see it because right now you currently can't do any of what you're saying. But with this, it would allow you to rent it as flex space. Well, my intent would be not to put anyone in the building that's going to be blocking up the street. Uh, if it was a delivery, it would be a timely thing, and it would take the necessary time frame, right. and then the truck would be moving on. Well, you wouldn't uh, be prohibited from doing that. Right. But inside of the walled area, if you could not park a tractor or any other type of a piece of equipment, that the, a lift... Let, and I don't you know say what, inside the wall area, you mean... Let's in, put your sign company In the there. building? It, it, inside the walled area. Uh -huh. well, you got the confines of what I would call the yard there. If we put your sign company there and you had your van that has the lift on it and everything and you couldn't park that out there, would you want that building? Well, I wouldn't. No, no I mean, it's got to be some kind of, in other words, I, I want to try to do something that's productive for not just me, but for the neighborhood and the city too. I want to clean up the building and keep it that way. But if I can't take a risk on buying something mm -hmm. that I'm going to be slammed in the door and said, no, you can't do that. I mean, there's got to be some kind of leeway there 
as to what what is reasonable about what you can go there. I mean, for the last 15, 20 years, there was a concrete company there. Nobody ever said a word about it. And now all of a sudden, you can't use it for anything, but changing the zoning is supposed to be making it better. That, that, that yeah. doesn't really too much make sense. Well, let's, you know, at the end of the day, the simple thing for the staff to have done was to simply tell the realtor and the bank that wanted to sell this, sorry, it's residential, that's what it should stay. What the city staff is recommending to you is an olive branch, it's not pure. It's not roses, it's an olive branch. You can either, you know, unfortunately, now that we've had this discussion, as the manager, I'm rethinking whether we should have even recommended rezoning the property. But you now have rezoned it. What we're asking you to do is find a way so that it remains compatible. Just because Mr. Riggs was a good citizen and he was compatible, and just because this gentleman tells you he's going to be compatible doesn't mean compatibility is going to be there. What you need, you have to remember, the downtown district was never intended for these uses. It's never intended for it. The best thing to do is to scrap the flex space, deny this, and leave it downtown, and let them find a use that will fit that building. Uh, let me say this. I really appreciate what the city has done for my company, Quality Roofers, especially since I got two sons that are involved in it now. Y'all have been over backwards, and hopefully uh, any one of y'all can visit our facility, and you will be proud of what you allowed us to do. Uh, I want to say that. Thank you. We appreciate it. And we keep 90% of our stuff in a warehouse. You never even see it now. We, you, I mean, we keep it clean. But uh, just one question. Uh, there by the school, there's probably 40 or 50 buses that park over there beside of this property. Is that going to affect them anyway? And that's just something I wanted to ask y'all. It has nothing to do with me or won't affect me. But the buses, is that going to affect them or are they good for that? Their property is not involved in the rezone. But, but the flex? Their property is not involved in this. Okay, because they're... Their, their property is not involved in okay, this. Okay, good. That's they're good. not That's They're good. Not conforming, but... Yeah, actually, they're just like us, non-conforming, exactly. but grandfathered they're, in. Kind of. They're a school. Okay. Yeah, yeah they're, that's true. They're not non-conforming. They are a they're, government they entity. They are a government <laughs> entity. They're allowed to do what they're, they're doing. They, but, uh, yeah, Mayor, they at this do. time, I would recommend that we withdraw this uh, petition for the standards for the flex space. However, it's in your hands to decide. Well, uh, we wanted to examine all the, uh, all the issues involved here. We have interested parties here. Well, I'll make a motion, if you'd like. Go ahead. Mayor Phillips, I'll, I'll make a motion to uh, to defer action and and uh, ask for a workshop and discussion of flex space and the defining flex space and and answering some of the questions other council members have in in terms of these guidelines and flex space and in this use before we make a final decision. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. All right. Thank you. In other, word, in other words, we're going to study it. Some more. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, that brings us to our last section of public comment for the evening. I don't have anyone have signed up for this, but did anyone come in after the sign-up sheet? Okay. Let's move on to the reports. <clears throat> Yes. Okay. Reports, and I'll start with uh, Mr. Bittner over here on my right. Civic Affairs Committee, of which I am the liaison, <clears throat> met last week and began working on the Patriot Day 9-11 ceremony, which is set for 8.15 a.m. Thursday, September 11th, of course, at the 9-11 memorial. This annual ceremony by the committee will feature rem remembrances of those who perished in the 9-11 event and those afterwards in the continuing war on terror. The Marine Corps 2nd Marine Division Band, Jacksonville High School Orchestra, and Northside Singers will perform. Again, that's 8-15 Thursday, September 11th at the 9-11 Memorial. <clears throat> The committee also decided to hold the annual Freedom Fountain observance, but this year it will be held in the evening to showcase 
the symphony of lights and to draw more attention to the reason the fountain was constructed. This annual telling of the story of the fountain and its history in our community will continue to include a water element as well as the annual freedom address which will be given by retired Colonel Grover Lewis. The event is set for November 6th. That's the report from the Civic Affairs Committee. On Wausau, of which I am liaison along with uh, Mayor Pro Tem, Lazar will be meeting Thursday. That's it, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. This weekend, the Mountford Point uh, Memorial Motorcycle Run is slated, and our next set of events is set for the weekend of September 19th. So if you're around this weekend, please join us for that. Um, Friday evening, the participants in the Marine Corps Half Marathon will be welcomed at the Jacksonville Onzo Sports Commission sponsored expo at the Riverwalk Palooza site at Riverwalk Crossing Park. We have over 600 runners and that are signed up far beyond the pace of signups last year and an estimated 1,000 runners are expected for the event. These runners and their families will be welcome to the expo to pick up their tickets, enjoy a pasta dinner, and enjoy the Riverwalk Palooza Festival while they're here. We're hopefully uh, they'll consider returning to the festival Saturday and stay a few extra days. One key change will be the addition of a water taxi which will transport attendees from the parking lots near the Center for Public Safety and Justice Center around, so we think that will be uh, a, good, a good event. The Jacksonville, North Carolina Fashion Week also centers around this weekend. Uh, the event has had the excitement of high fashion runways with hundreds of local but mostly out-of-state models coming to participate. It involves the public with wonderful fashion shows and a chance to showcase some unique fashions that are on sale here in Jacksonville. Also, Mind, Body, and Soul is a Family Empowerment Weekend, and the event sequence designed to bring the members of the families closer together with an obstacle race in the downtown Jacksonville and family-friendly events. Hundreds are expected to come to Jacksonville for this event as well. Um, the TDA strategy, uh, the authority continues to work on overall strategy with the work on what type of sports facilities will increase the number of overnight stays in Jacksonville lodging facilities. The work is to focus on getting factual data on which sports should be considered for a major complex and the type of construction that would facilitate the maximum overnight stays. Um, we had the Jacksonville Jamboree on Marine Corps Base Camp Lejeune, and that was a very successful event. Well attended, all the major high schools uh, attended and played, and. Uh, it was a nice it was a nice evening and that's the end of my report thank you thank you Ms. Washington mm -hmm. um, the environmental Impe appearance advisory committee in partnership with our local Hampton Inn sweets and Panera bread will host a clean and green appreciation breakfast for the sanitation division on next Thursday which is August the 28th from 5:30 a.m. until 6:30 a.m at the public service complex. It will be a grab and go breakfast to accommodate the work schedule of our men and women. And certainly you are welcome to attend. Many thanks goes to the Appearance and Partnership <coughs> Committee, the Hampton Inn, Panera Bread, and Mr. Carrie Terrell, the Sanitation Superintendent for the City of Jacksonville. The Cleanup Planning Committee has consulted with the Sanitation Department and is planning a citywide cleanup impetus to be held during the month of September. This is an idea to draw attention to the pickups that the sanitation divisions make regularly, but to make a special emphasis on yard waste and items that may be lingering at individuals' homes. As always, we are still taking applications for business and residential appearance awards to be awarded in October, so please call City Hall or visit the city website to nominate a business or residential um, for the appearances. As always, again, we are looking to increase our participation in the city adoption program. And again, please call the city website or contact City Hall if you would like to adopt a street 
um, within the city of Jacksonville. I have another report, Mayor, that I've also sent to the council to the city manager's office about a, a uh, annual conference of the National Black Caucus local elected officials that I had an opportunity to go to last month in Rochester, New York. It was entitled the North Star Journal, which basically was highlighting Frederick Douglass, one of the famous abolitionists in the United States. We had an opportunity to tour Rochester again, which was the resident of not only Frederick Douglass, but also Susan B. Anthony. During this particular conference, um, there was many guest speakers and just to highlight a couple of things. Um, one, Cassandra Frederick, a policy coordinator with the New York Drug Policy Alliance, discussed the relationship between our nation's drug policies and race. She indicated that currently there are close to a million persons of color that is currently incarcerated on marijuana convictions because now there is this drive for several states now to legalize the sale of marijuana. She also showed us a documentary entitled The House I Live In, which exhibits a clear relationship between the war on drugs and the extremely high number of Af African Americans, excuse me, who are currently incarcerated. We had an opportunity to be entertained with the Twilight Receptions by Mr. Je um, Don Jeffries, who is the president and CEO of Visit Rochester. He was able to coordinate with Mr. Garth Fagan, um, Dance Company of Rochester, and Mr. Fagan is famously known because in 1998, he was the Broadway Tony Award winner for his choreography of Walt Disney, The Lion King. So his dance trio was able to perform a dance recital for us at a twilight reception. We also had an opportunity to attend a workshop entitled Back to You Media Consultant with um, WPIX TV correspondent Nicole Johnson, who basically gave um, local elective officials um, tips on writing news release, how to conduct a press conference and get the min excuse me, media coverage that you want without minimizing the negativities within your current state. In addition, we also attended uh, ethical training, do the right thing right. Um, Dr. Eddie Holloway from Hattiesburg, Mississippi discussed with us the importance of displaying ethical conduct for local elective officials and basically how to display a code of personal conduct without getting yourself in trouble. We also were entertained by the city of Rochester and NBC Leo and radio station WDKX that basically sponsored a free concert to the city and of Rochester and NBC Leo participant at the Blue Cross Arena. It was estimated that with this particular concert that was um, given by Kindred Family Soul that there was between 1,000 and 1,500 attendees for that particular night. We also had an opportunity to um, attend a session about Asian investment mission. The gentleman that presented this particular forum for us was Dr. William Ramos, who is a director of intergovernment affairs within the United States Department of Commerce, stated that foreign directed investment from China and the United States is basically a $10.5 billion industry. And it he really expounded upon how the United States, um, along with other municipalities, are tapping into the Asian investment market to bring more money to be able to, to flow between those um, two entities. The Black Male Initiative panel continued from last summer's um, National Black Caucus that was held in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. This particular series continued with Mr. Roland Williams, who is a, um, a former Rochester and he is from the city of Rochester but now he is a Super Bowl champion um, he was with the St. Louis Rams that basically moderated this particular session for us pretty much he piggybacked off of President Barack Obama's initiative of my brother's keeper urging fathers to accept responsibilities and play a stronger role in the lives of their sons and to promote a strong education system focusing on pre-k and early childhood learning. We had an opportunity to have a luncheon with the mayor of Rochester, Mayor Lovely Warren, um, who 
is the first African American and the first female to be elected mayor of the city of Rochester. And basically her platform talked about reducing poverty and fighting crime and how to break the cycles of poverty and how to empower, and how to empower citizens to help themselves. And lastly, we had an opportunity to visit Ontario, Canada, and to continue our conversation with Dr. Demolai Smith, the Commissioner of Department of Neighborhood and Business Development in Rochester that basically said that now between a partnership with Canada and the United States that Rochester is currently receiving about $5 billion a year with a partnership in business between Canada and the United States. And that's my report. Thank you. Mr. Thomas. Thank you, Mayor Phillips. I just wanted to uh, take the opportunity to acknowledge my appreciation for a couple of departments. I think they've had it really tough lately uh, with the downpours and the rain that we've had. Uh, I've been out on occasion with uh, Johnny Stiltner, and, and he does a great job of helping people when, they, when he can with whatever he can on their flood issues. And uh, Pete Deaver and all his guys in, in uh, wastewater and collections have, have really been stressed uh, this past month or so as well their budget. But the downpour has been welcome for a while, but I'm, I'm glad it stopped. But it's, it's put a lot of stress on those guys, and, and they've done a great job. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Mr. Warden. Thank you. Real quickly, uh, back on the, I think it was the 5th of August, we had our national night out uh, mm -hmm. this year. I want to say that it was a, a good time had by all, I think. Uh, we had a, a lot, I think that was the biggest crowd we've had yet. Somewhere around the 12,000 was our estimate. Bring us a lot of faces, a lot of people down into the downtown area, which, you know, is something we're trying to do uh, more often during the year. But this, this one event really gives us the opportunity to showcase a lot of things that are being done downtown. And with that, that's my report. And Dr. Woodruff, I'll turn to you. Mayor, we have a video, nice lead in of National Night Out. Beyond that, I have no other report. Ten folks for putting that together, Mr. Carter. No report, man. Okay. All right. With that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.